sooner we begin, the more we can do in the time we have. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, had a pastor one time who, it was, uh, he, he said church started at 9, 9.30 or something. It was uh, 9.40 or 9.45, something like that. Paul and I had been there since 9.30 and we are waiting until service wasn't starting, service wasn't starting. And uh, I saw him come up to his uh, music ministry and said, well, let, let's wait a few more minutes before we start to let more people come in. I thought, well, why don't we just worship a little bit more? <laughs> we got more time, let's just do it. Let's begin. Lord God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you brought us together, Lord. Brought us together to learn of you, Lord God, this incredibly important subject. Moving in the gifts of your spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that your spirit, your gifts, Lord God, would just flow out of this church like water, Lord God, going out and reaching dry and parched ground, Lord Jesus. Lord, let it begin in us. Let it begin in us, Lord, as we minister to each other, Lord. Thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Okay, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we're talking about gifts. Let's begin by understanding that they are gifts. Gifts, okay? And what that means is it was given to you not because you deserved it, but because somebody who loved you wanted you to have it. Okay? And there's a huge difference there. You never earn a gift. I have children. Christmas was always one of the most wonderful times of the year for me. And I never got much. Right? <laughs> but it's because I love giving. Now the problem with that is, since you can never earn a gift, there is no level of character that will justify you having a certain gift. Okay? So a lot of people get confused by that. They, 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 get, they get confused by, they'll see some very, very gifted person with great gifts of the Spirit, and then find that that person has some or perhaps great flaws in their character. That doesn't speak badly on the one who gave the gift. Okay? Because God gives his gift freely. It, it, it's like if I gave you a car, and you use that car to rob a bank, that says nothing about me. <laughs> and if God didn't give his gifts away for free, he couldn't give them away for all, at all. And if he gave them away based on character, none of us would get the gifts Come of the on, Holy Spirit. Right. And God gives us the gifts because he wants us to have them because he wants them flowing in, in, in his church. Right. I, I was in a church one time years ago and the, there was a pastor who greatly gifted greatly gifted. He had a gift of leading worship. And I'll tell you, he could get up there and pick up his guitar, and you could just feel the glory fall. Just amazing, you know? And uh, later on, we found out that uh, he had, let's just leave it at great personal flaws in his life. Great personal flaws, okay? He ended up uh, having to leave the ministry and rightly so because of it. And I, I, I was very broken because of it, because I, I respected this man greatly. He had even done great things for God. But uh, it, the flaws in his character didn't, didn't allow him to continue the ministry. So I got up on a retreat up in uh, uh, a place called the Lord's Land, uh, way up uh, almost to Eureka up in uh, Northern California. And I spent some time in prayer, and I was praying one day, and I said, uh, Lord, how could you give this man such great gifts? The Lord spoke to me and said, the same way I give them to you. Free. We never deserve the gifts. Now, I will add to that, though. God is a wise God, and he is, tries to be careful to not give you a gift that would destroy you. And trust me, many of you, if you were given literally the greatest gift of healing, that everybody you touched was healed, you probably wouldn't stand the spiritual pressure. You probably wouldn't be able to handle, number one, that level of warfare, number two, that level of responsibility. And it wouldn't be long before you'd be charging people, you know, for that little touch. And you'd be rich, but your soul would be in great danger. So when you see flaws in God's great men, that is not a place to stand and accuse God of saying, why did you give them that gift? That is a place to pray for them because we need heroes of the faith. We need heroes of the faith. And we all come with flaws. We all come with, with, with drawbacks. So don't, don't, don't be surprised when you see that the gifts given freely and 
I'll tell you this, all of you have been given gifts. By, by being given the Holy Spirit, you've been given gifts. And I know uh, probably uh, Brother and Sister Rank are going to be talking more about the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming up. But uh, as you have the Holy Spirit in you, the gifts come with it. Now, a lot of you have the gifts but don't realize it. You already have them moving in your heart and life. And some of you have great gifts. You've just been afraid to walk in them. I'm already hearing some. Some of them I, I have these dreams. I'm like, okay. You know, we need dreams in the church. Yeah. You know? Um, but some of you have been walking in giftedness and not even understood it. So let's talk about how the gifts operate because one of the hardest things is all you see is a manifestation. You see Steve stand up and say something. And what you assume is that somewhere in this great closet of God, Steve heard all of that and came with it all ready to just feel the whole thing out. And he may have. He may have. But he may not have. He may have just heard from the Lord, the lady with, you know, the, the, the green pants, you know. Uh, give her a word, I'll give it to you when you start. It's true. I've had both happen to me. I've had times where I came and, and I had the word. Normally for me, the words don't come to me until I actually, until I actually approach the person. And then the, the words often unwind for me. But sometimes I, I, I get the whole word. Uh, Sunday night, we had some, uh, uh, some people come up and there was this uh, one young lady that uh, needed me to pray for it. As I walked up to her, the Lord just, you know, I, I knew exactly what to say to her. And it was just all there, you know, and just, Pretty well word for word. I just spoke it out. It was, uh, just so you know, speaking words like that, the biggest thing is it's kind of scary. <laughs> it really is. You're, I mean, you're, you're saying something like, uh, 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 is that going to be right? I, you know? And I don't know, Steve, do you ever get over that being kind of a, a, an odd feeling? You never do, okay? You never get over that kind of odd feeling of, what if they say no? And I've had people say no. No, that wasn't God. It was just, Early on, when I was way early, I was, in my, I was in my early 20s, and I was so happy to have God moving through me, and I, I, I'd pray for people, I'd get stuff, and, and uh, this one guy's uh, down praying, and I, 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 I'm going to pray for this guy, I'm going to get a word for him, and finally I, I looked at him, put my hand on his shoulder, and said, brother, do you, do you have a problem with drug addiction? He looks like, no. <laughs> I don't know why, he's just maybe to knock me off my horse, or maybe I was getting ahead of myself, or getting ahead of the Holy Spirit. That has happened to me, and it's part of the learning process. It is okay to make mistakes, especially under the New Testament prophetic. Because understand the difference between the Old Testament prophetic and the New Testament prophetic. The difference is not in the prophet himself. The prophet and the gift are much the same. The difference is in the people that are being prophesied to. So... <clears throat> In the Old Testament, if I prophesied, I prophesied to people who did not have the Holy Spirit in them. So the Holy Spirit could not agree with them and resonate with them that that, that, that was what God was saying. In the New Testament, I could say, Bob, I've got a word for you. And if I speak that word, and Bob says, no, that's not what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. See, Bob has within him the ability through the Holy Spirit to discern that word, which is not in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the prophet spoke, you had to assume it was right just because the prophet spoke. In the New Testament, you've got the Holy Spirit in you to discern whether that word is God, which gives us a little more flexibility, honestly, to make mistakes. And don't put a prophet up on a pedestal. Trust me. The greatest, greatest prophets we have today make mistakes. And sometimes it is either that they give a bad prophecy, sometimes it's that they add to a prophecy. So if God's giving you something, let me give you a solid word right now. You can take notes, write this down. Don't say any more than the Lord gave you. Don't say any more than the Lord gave you. The Lord gives you something, don't go editorializing on it. All right? Don't add to what the Lord said. There was a, uh, uh, this, this book, by the way, I'm going to take some stuff from this book. Uh, this is You All Might Prophesy by Steve Thompson. It is the greatest book, in my opinion, on walking with prophetic. Kind of hard to find right now. Um, Steve just uh, moved his ministry and it's, uh, uh, was out of print for a little while. You can still get it on Kindle, though. If you have a, if you have a on Amazon, you have a Kindle or a, um, I guess iPad or whatever, you can, uh, you can still get it. I have it on my iPad. 
But this is, this is absolutely tremendous book. And uh, he talks about at one point this uh, prophetic person who was prophesying in the service, and he saw someone uh, with musical notes dancing all around him. Okay? He looked and said, okay, this person has a music ministry. So he walked up to them and said, you know, you're holding back. God has this musical ministry for you. For you. you need to step out in it, and you need to, you know. And uh, just went on about this guy having a, a singing ministry and things like that, releasing it. And, like <clears throat> and uh, the, it threw the guy in a lot of confusion. So later, the, the, it, it caused so much confusion that the pastor of the church actually had to call him back to talk to this guy. It turns out this guy has no, had no musical talent to speak of. Couldn't play piano, couldn't play guitar, couldn't sing it up. However, he ran a music store. <laughs> now, how much better would it have been if he just said, I see musical notes dancing around you. Brother Faulkner, tell that story you told earlier. Come on. <laughs> he told me this story, and I'm like, i I got to have him tell us this tonight. Okay. Um, let, let me just, just take 30 seconds to reiterate what uh, Wes is saying is so true, folks. Um, the gift is free. <clears throat> and, uh, and, uh, but uh, great stewardship is placed on everything that God does give us. Amen. And that's really, really, that's really uh, and one more thing. Uh, you know what Paul said? Stir up the gift of God. The, the, the gift that comes from God, Second Timothy. Stir up the gift of God that is within you. And, uh, and just... Uh, you were talking about how that um, when we get around this kind of atmosphere, as we uh, we are all entering into a, a sensitivity and a greater hunger for for the things of God and greater manifestations of the glory of God. I watch on some of the young ones. I remember what he said. And it's true. Your gift can take you where your character won't keep you. Amen. If you don't have good character um, and you won't sustain long in any area of ministry, your character. Um, will sustain you. Your gifts will take you sometimes where your character won't keep you. That's why you see men uh, who are so flawed. Their gifts just elevate them and your gift of Bible will make room for you. But your character is what will really sustain you in ministry. So, so keep a balance there. Now I won't pray about the gifting of the Lord that He placed in your life, but about your character. You know, the way you live. Because God will rarely do through you what He can't do in you. Yeah. All right. And those were excellent words. And get around. How do I start thinking? Get around people. I see Paul went on to say, by the laying on of my hands, this gift came upon me. He said, which you receive by the laying on of my hands. Uh, when you're around people uh, who are prophetic, or you're around people who flow in gifts of knowledge of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, or around someone that's a sensitive prayer warrior, or the sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of God, you will find inherently that if you get around people like that, whatever gift is in you gets stirred up. That's one of the ways to get it stirred up. Uh, I just, <clears throat> Brother Allen, would, uh, when uh, A. Allen, one of the greatest men of God that ever walked the face of the earth, he would sometimes just walk by and lay hands on the young ministers or, or uh, senior and elderly ministers and just stop right in the middle of a sermon and lay hands on people and, and just say, I... I let the, the anointing that's upon me rest upon you. The gifting that's upon me rest upon you. And he, I mean, there was great impartation. And, and they'll be teaching on this in the days to come. Uh, uh, what impartation really is. And, and how that literally being around gifting. And, and, and as we're being taught and we're seeking the Lord. Uh, you're going to see greater levels of sensitivity. And manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, what, I was, uh, what he wanted me to share with you. Was a, a, a story. Um. And I was talking to him uh, earlier about how that uh, when I was traveling uh, and I would spend all day praying and fasting, uh, many, fasting many days and, and, and just spend all day in my room just praying uh, and seeking God. And you get into this flow of sensitivity that can be so intense and, and yet leave you so vulnerable. And I, I, I really say, you ask him the question, but I'm going to give you my answer. Do you ever... Just not get scared or, or, or momentarily shaken when God speaks something so sensitive or, or direct. No, I don't. Uh, my humanity is always out there. 
Uh, I, I, can, I can turn and, and tell someone, you know, your name is so-and-so, and, -so and, and uh, I, I literally uh, gave the person's name and, and where they lived and what was going on in their life, and then turn around five seconds later and I'm going to go speak about somebody else and, and sit there shaking, going, okay, God, I want to make sure this is you. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, your humanity is always there. I want you to understand that. So don't be afraid to listen to the voice of God and stay sensitive. Now, I was in a service and there had been a flow of miracles. Uh, the word of knowledge was going forth and I was, I, I preached and was just going down the line. It just seemed like that and I got to have a word for everyone. I come up to this lady. I didn't know her, uh, but the Lord showed me that she was in ministry, her and her husband. And I began to share with her that her and her husband were in ministry and she, she said yes. And, and uh, I said, and your prayer today was, your prayer today was God. Uh, my husband and I have given so much for the sake of the ministry that our own family, our kids, have gone without it. Uh, you know, uh, nice clothes, uh, uh, we've traveled, and, and she said, Lord, um, would you provide, uh, not just through us to other people, but for my own children, would you, uh, could I just ask you to bless my children so they could have nice clothes to wear to school? And, and she was just asking, she said, I don't want to be selfish, but at the same time, um, I, I really would appreciate some favor on my own family and our own financial need. And I shared all this with her, and she just began to weep, and she said, that is exactly what I prayed today. I was asking God for my own kids and my own family. And, uh, and then, all of a sudden, I, I, was, I continued to speak a word, and all of a sudden, I, everything went blank except... I, it was like a vision. I see cupcakes, cookies, and cakes. <laughs> and I said, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm talking about sacrificing for the ministry and, and, and her asking for favor from the Lord. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing cookies, cupcakes, and, and you know, pies, and all these bakery goods. And I, I'm hesitant because this doesn't fit. This scenario, because it just changed. And I said, you know what? Uh, does this make sense to you? All of a sudden, I'm, you know, the flow is just interrupted, and I see cupcakes, cookies, cakes, and pies. And she just fell on the floor and just began to just wail. <laughs> and I'm looking at her weird, you know, and everybody looking at her like, what just happened? And she's just crying and wailing and. Finally, she composed herself and she gets up and she says, you're not going to believe this. She said, right after I prayed, what you said I prayed today. She said, I'm a confectionery or whatever, a uh, uh, chef, I'm a, I'm a baker, a uh, professional baker. And I laid all that aside years ago to be in the ministry. And, and she said, just today, I had a call from North Carolina about... Uh, an invitation to come. Someone bought a bakery there and wanted me to come and they were going to give it to me. But I did not know if I should go or not. And I asked God for a sign. God, give me a sign that would let me know that we're supposed to go in that direction and it would meet both needs. Uh, 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 not only a ministry for my children, uh, but also a ministry for me through the bakery. And when you said that, she said, it's so overwhelming. It just... It just blew me away because that was God saying to me, "Yes, go." And uh, she said, "We're going to be on. We're going to be on the road by next week." Amen. We're headed to North Carolina. And how do you know God knows those sensitive things? Amen. Yes. 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 I. Uh, he he said that. Oh, oh, that that so illustrates the the, the point I was trying to make. And uh, the thing is. What, what if he had tried to add to that? What, what if instead of if he'd seen, oh, desserts and this, that, would have, would have tried to say, you know, I, I think God wants to bring you to a dessert level of he's going to give you more stuff. You know, if he tried to editorial, he just said what he saw. He just said what he saw, okay? Okay, um, in Revelation, we basically have, uh, a, there's lower levels of Revelation, and then there's higher levels of Revelation. And the, the division usually is, is fairly simple. Your high levels of revelation are the ones that are undeniable, okay? God speaks in a room, everybody hears it, that's pretty undeniable. Jesus appears, that's undeniable, okay? Angels walk through the room, that's undeniable. 
okay? Vision, you know, high-level visions where you're just uh, transported out of your body and seeing things. Those things are undeniable. Now, those things happen, but even for the people at, at the highest levels of, of the prophetic, normally that's, that's somewhat rare. And for the rest of us, some of us never see that in our lives. It does not make us less spiritual or less accepted by God, okay? It just means that for what we are called to do, we are given what we need. But uh, <clears throat> what we're talking about today far more is what we call lower levels of revelation, which are things that are a lot more, a lot more hazy. They're, they're a lot more indistinct. They're, 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 a lot more, they're, they're a lot more of a puzzle. Remember we've talked about this a lot, that walking in the Spirit is seeking out the Easter eggs of God, seeking out the hidden things, seeking out the things that are not obvious. And that is the walk that you have. Don't, don't think that, you know, it's necessarily going to come to you. I'm, I'm not going to say it doesn't, but rarely, this is very rarely for people, most of the time, as you walk in the Spirit, walking in the, in the anointing, what you're going to have is things that are um, just impressions, okay? And impressions are the worst because, you know, they're, they're, they're very deniable, okay? They're very deniable. They're, they're not undeniable at all. They're easy to deny. And, and you have to lay hold of them. And this is where you have to become a seeker after God. You have to seek after these things. You have to say, Lord, I, I want these things. You have to pursue after them because they'll, they'll, they're here and they're gone. Okay? And so many times you didn't even know that they were even there. So uh, things you're going to have is like little internal visions you see, which is what he was talking about with the cookies and cakes. He, didn't, he wasn't transported up to heaven and see cookies and cakes floating around. He saw it just in his spirit. And your imagination can show you things too. So it's easy to misunderstand those, isn't it? Okay? So it's easy to misunderstand those things. Um, and some of the, some of the more... Uh, the, the still small voice of God, just God kind of speaking to you. Here's the problem with the still small voice of God, is he is so familiar because he is so much your friend that it's often very difficult to tell the difference between God's voice and your own thoughts. It really is because he's so familiar. Now, I, I, I kind of, <clears throat> with much training, and this is a training process, and next week we're going to really kind of go heavy into the training process and the character process because we don't want to see any of you fail. It is my prayer that many, if not all of you, or at least some, walk out of here with great giftedness that is a great asset to the body of Christ, but I don't want to see anybody fall because of lack of preparation. We're going to talk a lot next week about, about the preparation and the things that you have to look for to be prepared in the Holy Spirit. But... Uh, <clears throat> The best way to know God's voice well is to talk to Him a lot. Now, that sounds obvious, but it's true. You talk to Him a lot. And I don't mean just, you know, whispering your prayers and running from one place to another. I mean you set aside times. You, you, you have a prayer closet that, that, that you go into, a place where you get quiet and alone, and it's just you and your thoughts, and then those thoughts come in your mind and go, wait. That didn't come to my mind, did it? That, that came from someplace else. I, 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 know, I know my thoughts. That's very familiar. It, it is very warm to me. It's a very friendly voice. But that wasn't quite me, was it? Lord, is that you? <laughs> I, I like to call those God nudges. I like to call those God nudges. God just nudges you a little bit. You get that, that sense God's speaking to me. And it doesn't always come just like... You know, like the other day, I was driving down the road. And it was 7.15 in the morning. And God speaks to me, and he said, right now, right now, look at the clock. And it was 7.15. Well, I'm telling you, I, I, yes, I guess it was 7.15 or 8.15. It was, it was 15 minutes after, but it was 7.15 or 8.15. It's early in the morning for me to be out. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he said to me, he said, Wherever this certain person is right now, in travel, wherever they are, they're headed to somewhere, give them an offering to assist them for that journey. But they're on the road at this very minute, going somewhere, and they need 
uh, finances for that, uh, you know, for that ministry area. Well, that's like, okay, God, I know that's you. I mean, that's so clear, the time, the setting, the whatever. But, but, but that little gentle nudge that says, pray for, pray for uh, 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 Bob right now as I'm going down the road. Just, you know, uh, Bob comes for me and, and pray for Bob. I don't know what's going on with Bob, so it would be easy just to let that slide. Uh, but, but those little God nudges, the more sensitive. And, and one more thing, the more you respond, when you hear and know it's God, uh, the, the more he speaks and the more responsive you are to it. And the more you respond and the more he speaks and the more sensitive you get, here's an interesting fact. And this is not always true, but it's a general true statement. God's voice usually gets softer, not louder. Because he wants you to be more sensitive. He's training you in sensitivity. How many of you love yelling at your children? Yeah. Some of you. <laughs> How many of you love it when you and your children have such a relationship you can just speak gently to them and they do what you say? Isn't that better? Mario Murillo said, said that to me one, one time. I was at one of the services. He said that. He said, as you get older, God's voice doesn't get louder. It gets softer. It gets softer because he wants you to hear. He wants you to pay attention more and hear. Amen. Um, before we go on to the next step, uh, Steve, do you have a word for anyone? No, I do not. No. Okay, all right, we'll move on. Um, in the impressions, now here's where it gets interesting. Remember what I said, God wants you to seek things out. So what, what do you seek for? So much we talk about the internal <coughs> voice, the, the, the voice, uh, that, that little ins uh, inside voice and hearing those things. And of course, that is uh, the fundamentals of us talking back and forth to God. But God wants us to seek for him for the supernatural. Now, when I say the supernatural, let's say the unusual, the out of place, the odd things. Things that just, just catch your attention, but you don't know why. All right? So, for example, um, a, a lot of times when people are praying, when you're praying for the sick, you may feel, um, the term I would use is sympathetic pain. But as you're praying for someone, you may actually start feeling a pain in a certain, in a certain part of your body. Mm. Now that pain in that certain part of your body doesn't necessarily just mean you're in pain, okay? It's God nudging you to let you know that person has a pain in that area of their body too. So pay attention to those things. Be very sensitive. Be sensitive to the unusual. Be sensitive to what is, to, to, to what is odd going on. It's like, wow, why did I suddenly get this pain in my back? <clears throat> pay attention to everything that's going on not just the voice, not just the word now God's given you five senses and God can speak to you through all five of those senses and if you walk further in the prophetic you will find all five of those senses active yeah. so <clears throat> for example okay, the sense of smell it is not uncommon for people to smell something prophetically and it can have great meaning. I'll give you an example. Our daughter Carissa, who many of you have met now, she's come back from Missouri. Um, our daughter Carissa, we were, we were praying about sending her to Bethel for this Bethel School of Dentistry for a year. And uh, we, felt, we felt good about it. We felt like that's what was supposed to happen. <clears throat> so we uh, went down to Riverside for a prophetic conference there. And uh, they had a time where they just had us all line up and they had these men with proven prophetic ministries they just went by and prophesied over each one of us. And uh, one man who, <coughs> we need to get here, here sometime, uh, Brian Slezak, he, is, uh, he, he was head of prophetic ministries for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the venue denomination. Very, very powerful prophet. And uh, <coughs> he came by and he walked up to uh, Carissa, and as he started to lay hands on her, he stepped back and he said, I smell lavender. And is any of you wearing lavender perfume? No, it wasn't me. It wasn't my daughter. You know, it wasn't Paula. There's no lavender. None of the rest of us smell lavender. <clears throat> now, just so you know, think about it. If you walked up to somebody and they smelled like lavender, what would you think? Oh, they're wearing lavender cologne. But he was tuned to everything going on. 
He said, and, he, and all he did was speak it out. He said, I smell lavender. And, and if she would have said, I'm wearing lavender cologne, okay, he would have moved on, right? It's okay to do that. We don't have to walk up to every situation and say, thus saith the Lord. In fact, it's much better if we never say, thus saith the Lord. It's much better if we just say, I have this impression. I smell this, something like, you know. It's much better if we say that because then we're not casting this. We're, we're not blaming God for our mistakes, okay? <laughs> We're not adding a, 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 an authority to our statements that weren't there to begin with. So anyway, he says, I smell lavender. And, and we're like, okay. All right. I don't know what that means. Anybody know what that means? Nobody knew what that means. <laughs> you know? Okay, well, I smell lavender. And we're like, okay. Thank you, Brian. At that time, we thought he was a little crazy. Then he went ahead and gave her a word that was just, bam, straight on. Gave me a word that was even more right on. I'm like, okay. I don't understand the lavender thing, but this guy's a god. So, later that summer, we drive to Bethel to check it out. And uh, I, I, I found this little bed and breakfast place online that we went to stay at. So we're staying at this bed and breakfast place. Lo and behold, guess what this bed and breakfast place has? A field of lavender. They actually professionally grew lavender plants and sold them. <laughs> and we saw and we knew this is where she's supposed to be. The smell, lavender, I don't understand it, but it worked, and it had so much meaning to us later. Taste, I've never had this happen to me, but I know that uh, I've talked to people who have strong deliverance ministries, and they can actually tell by the taste in their mouth what type of demon they're dealing with, and they actually find it very useful. It's like, you know, lay hands on someone, get a certain taste in their mouth, or a smell, sometimes a smell, they'll, 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 they'll get a certain smell, which... My understanding is most demons smell pretty nasty. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny that you would say that. Uh, and I've never really ever talked about this. But when I have dealt with real, and I, I'm not going to apologize for what I'm going to say, I'm, just, I'm not going to be real graphic. But when I've dealt with um, demonically possessed sexual predators, every time I've ever prayed, and that was, and God will build that to me immediately and older. I had tremendous nauseating odor. I don't know if it was on them or it was just something that I, uh, but probably five times in my life, and every single time that the Lord showed me that and I dealt with it and was dealing with that demonic power, there was that strong, just ugly, I can't even describe it, nauseous uh, odor. I wish I had that more. <laughs> I mean, it really, it sounds like a nice indicator. That when you're, and now when you, when you smell that smell, it's like, I know what that is. So, just be, be sensitive to those things. Be, be sensitive to, to the internal visions. Um, sight. Now, here's an interesting one. So, what do you see? And what I'm saying is, look for something, not looking for it, but be aware of it. Something unusual. If you see something and it just triggers something unusual, ask what it is. Now, here's an odd one, and I'll just use this as an example. And I've heard this from a lot of prophets. If you see a, uh, a lot of prophets have had this happen to them, then they'll see someone and, and, they'll, and, and they'll think, man, that, that looks just like my Uncle Bob. You know, that looks just like my, my nephew. That, that guy looks just like, um, it is not uncommon. In fact, it's very common for that recognition to trigger an event that God is showing you that that person has some characteristic in common with that other person. Okay? So, uh, so here's what you do. There's no point in just going up saying, hey, I think you look like, you know, my, my Uncle Bob, okay? But start asking the Lord. It's like, Lord, are you trying to show me something? You know, are you trying to show me something? And many times I'll say, oh, oh, you know, you'll realize, okay, my Uncle Bob had this and this and this problem in his life, and bing, you know, Holy Spirit said, that's it. And you build up to that person and say, you know, are you having a struggle with this, 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 and this? That, that is actually so common that, that I, I was surprised when I actually started reading about it. And I don't know if that's happened to me. So there's, there's been times where I, where I haven't happened. The, the interesting thing is, 
<clears throat> then later they'll look at that same person and say, well, that guy didn't look like Michael Bob at all. What was I thinking? There, there, there's, there's no comparison. So if you see something unusual, um, Steve Thompson tells about a time he, he, he saw a woman's hands were white. And uh, this triggered that. He asked the Lord about it. It, it was a prophetic message to him that, that, uh, to, to give to this woman as to her hands were white and this meant this and this and the other thing. So you may actually see something. Uh, there's a prophet back in the, in the 1940s revival that would actually see, I know this sounds weird, but he would actually see anagrams above people's heads, you know, and, and, and it would give them, for years, I know for years he would never tell people what he saw because it seemed so weird even to him. But uh, one of the examples he gave, he, he saw a dog, an alligator, and the alligator bit off this dog's tail. And it turns out, and, and through this, this Lord, what are you trying to show me? It turns out the guy's name was bit off. That was his last name. So he called this guy out by name. Bit off. <laughs> you see it, you know? So sight, sight, may, sight may, play, may play a role in what you touch. Touch, when, when you touch something. Sometimes just a very simple fact of touching something will, will, will trigger, you know, just a sense. And you get that spiritual sense and just stop saying, Lord, what are you trying to show me? Steve, was, uh, Steve Thompson uh, tells about one time where uh, a fax came in. And he... Uh, <clears throat> He went to pick up this fax, and he was going to give it to Rick Joyner, who he was working with at that time. And as he touched the, as he touched the fax, he just <coughs> got this <clears throat> profound feeling that this fax, this piece of paper, just by touching it, had, came from a control spirit, a controlling spirit. And he, and he went to, we went to Rick, and he said, I don't know what this is about, but I feel a real control spirit on it. And, uh, and it turned out it was someone that was trying to get Rick involved in something would help them Get, gain control over his ministry. So you touch things. Be aware of the. The thing is, the reason I'm telling you this is many of you may have been having these things happen already to you and you just didn't know how to pursue it. And you pursue it by looking for God around every corner. You pursue it by walking with Him all the time and expecting that He is speaking to you expecting that if something's unusual, maybe that's an Easter egg from God. Maybe I'm seeing that little glint of color on the grass, that this is a God moment in, 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 you know, in its infancy preparing to happen to me, and pursue after it and say, and it, now, it might not be anything. Maybe the girl is wearing lavender perfume. Maybe it's nothing, but pursue after it. Um, I like this little story here, because... Uh, Bob Prophet, uh, Bob, Bob Jones, who's a great prophet of God, uh, just, uh, just passed away just last weekend at 83. But uh, Steve and Bob were uh, ministering at a conference. I, I, I'm just going to read this to you straight because I, I, can't, I can't tell it better than he could say it. It says, Bob and I have been ministering for most of the day and I was worn out. Bob, meanwhile, was going strong. I decided to take a break, went to the back of the room, and sat down approximately 20 feet behind Bob as he continued ministering to a young woman. <clears throat> I began rubbing my right eye, which just started itching. As soon as I did this, Bob, with his back still turned to me, yelled, Steve, that's not just your eye itching, it's God speaking to you about her eye. You've got to pay attention. <laughs> Needless to say, I started paying attention. As you minister, pay attention. Pay attention as you walk through this life. Just pay attention. Expect God to be there. Expect Him to surprise you. And I'm going to say this. All of you have this going on to different levels in your lives right now. Right now. And I'm not going to, maybe I shouldn't even say different levels. God doesn't favor anyone over anyone else. God is speaking to you just as much as He's speaking to Brother Faulkner you probably just aren't paying attention as much. Larry Lee, the great teacher on prayer, told about a time where God, uh, God gave him a vision, and he saw himself, just himself, but with huge Mickey Mouse ears. And uh, he said, Lord, what are you trying to show me? The Lord said, 
because of your constantly listening to me, you have developed a great sensitivity to me that you hear everything I say. I often hear people saying, why doesn't God speak to me more? God does speak to you, but number one, you may not be listening. Number two, you may not be understanding his method of speaking. Okay? Number three, he just may be speaking about something different than what you want to talk about. <laughs> and that's okay. Stand back sometimes and say, Lord, what do you want to talk to me about? You're sitting there going, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you know, my finances, my this, my that. He may be talking quite loudly about something else. And because that's all you want to hear about, you're not hearing what he's saying. I don't know how many times I've had these, some major thing going on in my life, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I need an answer on this, an answer on that, and... And the Lord's telling me something like, you know, go over and do something for, you know, my, my neighbor, my neighbor uh, next to me and, and the next room over or something like that. Or, or just speaking to me about something else, you know. And I'm like, Lord. And you know, one time I, 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 I sat down and there were some things I really needed answers for. At least I thought I really needed answers for. Notice the I thought there. I thought I really needed answers. And God was, and God spoke to me about some, something completely unrelated all the things going on. And I sat down and I realized, I am hearing God just fine. The channel is open. He's just not talking about what I want to hear. Maybe I need to change my questions rather than his <coughs> answers. Okay? <laughs> you know, I, 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 there's, that, there's that scripture in the Bible that says, you know, uh, that God will give you the desires of your heart. I'm not sure if that means God's going to give you the stuff you desire or if he's going to give you the right desires. <laughs> and actually, you're better off if he gives you the right desires than if he gives you the stuff you're wanting right now. One time I was uh, sitting watching TV and God was dealing with me not to watch so much TV. And um, the Lord kind of gave me this little vision of this soldier going into battle. He's got his rifle and he's got his bayonet and he's got his little hat on and stuff. He's got this huge TV strapped to his back. And God says, there's some things you really don't need to take where you need to go. <laughs> it's okay to put this stuff aside. Amen. So, I know as far as touch goes, I frequently, I'm kind of a touchy person, so when I'm praying for people, if I have physical contact, I tend to get more revelation. Now, that does not mean that you always have to have that touch because I, I know there was uh, one minister that uh, I, was, I was a great, great healing evangelist and he said there just came a time where God just spoke to you. You don't need to touch people anymore to get this revelation. But up to that point, you did. And I do. Okay? I need to touch people. When I touch them, bam. Jesus said the woman who had the, who had the flow of blood, she touched his garment. And when she touched his garment, Jesus felt you know, the power go out of him and she was healed. Okay, um, God speaks to us in odd and unusual ways. I want to encourage you to listen very closely to what he says. If at all possible, write it down. Okay? It's good to keep a pen and paper with you. Write stuff down. And be careful of the wording he uses. I know people disagree with me on this, but I have found times where God worded things in such a way that I took it one way and later when I went back over it, it was not what he said. Or he said it in such a way that I misunderstood it. Now, I, people say, oh no, God will always let you know exactly what he's doing and there'll be no questions. Like, not my experience. I can only speak for myself. I know uh, years ago I went up to San Francisco and I, I, I was going to... I was going to be a street missionary, and I was for five years. So I was going to go up and preach on the streets of uh, San Francisco, which, by the way, is a really scary place to minister, just so you know. There's some really weird people there. We decided to go to the weirdest places. It's like, if you're going to minister in San Francisco, you've got to be right down there with, you know. First night I was there, some big, huge, about six foot six black man with 
huge bushy hair on his chest came stomping by in a full Christian Dwar dress and high heels. I'm like, oh, turn it on Kansas. <laughs> and I did grow up in Kansas, so I can truly say that. <laughs> I like that stuff I don't see every day. <laughs> of course, in San Francisco it is, but uh, but I, I went up there and I'm driving up there, putting up in my little Volkswagen and uh, me and my my bedroll and my guitar, and I'm going to go up and preach on the streets. And as as I'm going up there, God speaks to me, and this this is clear. This is a clear word. And God says, "You know, you may die on the streets this year." No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now I'm warned. This is it. I've got one year left at the max. This year I go home. I went up there with this attitude. I, I may as well just jump into the whole hog because I've only got a year left anyway. And the first night I was up there, the first night I was up there, I joined this absolutely crazy group of ministers. It's just wild for Jesus. I mean, they would do anything. I mean, they had the old, you know, point the gun at their head and click and the gun misfires and this kind of stuff. They, they had all those stories, you know. And we're meeting for the, for the first uh, <clears throat> the first time I was there. <clears throat> and the leader of the group gets up and he says, I feel God's told me a special thing. He said, uh, one of us is going to die for the Lord this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and, uh, he said, and we're going to have a special communion and we're going to have communion to celebrate our death for the Lord. I'll never get married. I'll never have children. <laughs> okay, Lord, this is what I came here for. And you know, someone did die that, that year. And it was him. Oh my and he did. He died that year. He died in the ministry. And it wasn't me. And I went back and I'm like, Lord, you see, you know, the anniversary of that date comes by. I'm like, I'm still here. What happened? And I went back and I thought, because it was so clear to me in my mind. Oh, he said, you know, you may die this year. The word may is a really important word when it comes to dying. And I hope you know. You may die this year. I, I could. I could. I didn't. I could have, but I didn't. Right. So, God will do stuff with you. And I'm not saying he's playing with your mind. He isn't. Everything he does for you is for your good. And you know, that really helped me with my commitment because <clears throat> at that point, and several other points in my life, I faced the fact <clears throat> that I may die for Christ. And if I do, I'm ready. I'm ready. I faced that possibility. I'm, I, I'm, ready, I'm ready to die for the Lord. I don't want to. You know, I think you're a little crazy if you want to. I think there's something wrong with that. But I, but I, but I, I know that I am ready to make that commitment if that's, if that's what happens. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, I, I pray this isn't an interruption. As you were talking about touch, taste, in one of your senses, write this down. This is, this is a really healthy as a principle. It's, it's one that... that uh, that I find, the Bible says through prophecy, you, it causes you to fight a good warfare. If you're in a battle, somebody, I, most of the time when you're ministering to someone, they're, they're in some kind of a struggle, a battle, trying to overcome something. And your word is the thing that helps them get through or over in that situation. It helps them overcome that setting. And that's why he said to Timothy Paul, and he said, uh, through, these, through the prophecies that are over you, it helps you fight a good warfare. Here's the key. You're talking about this, the senses. Touch, taste, all of them. Any senses. Feel, um, sight. Write down W, leave a space, I, N. When. What I notice. What, what I am perceptive to is the winning edge. In any battle that prophecy has the ability to help someone overcome, get through a struggle. What, W, I, notice, win, W-I-N. And I use that acronym all the time in my mind. Uh, the winning edge for you and I is always what, through the Holy Spirit, God uses our senses to, 
to um, hear, to see, to feel, to taste, to touch. It is the cutting edge difference that win comes when you walk into a service and everybody else walks in and they're not sensitive to any of the areas that God's dealing with you or can deal with you in your human feature. Uh, there's people that really are afraid of that will walk into the building and see all kinds of things nobody else sees. It's what they notice. They walk in and realize, um, like Kathy was uh, saying something to me today about, I'm, you know, she was in prayer about something about uh, before this battle ever got off the ground, uh, how the enemy would like to stop the flow of what God's doing uh, in, in our church. That uh, she was already praying ahead of the ahead of the curve or ahead of the, that that attack uh, to subdue that and speaking against it before it ever happened. Uh, and uh, so so what I notice is important. What I notice when you come into the service. Your, your, your senses will get keener and keener. You walk into service. Some folks walk in and all they see is the music wasn't real good this morning or it was really good. That's in the natural. But some people don't see the reason everything was in chaotic was because there's spiritual realms in warfare already trying to hinder and stop what God wants to do in that service. If you can get you confused or hindered. And uh, have you ever just stopped on the way to church and you and your wife are in a heated dialogue? For no reason, it makes no sense. You feel like somebody just pulled the trigger on that situation, and then all of a sudden you stop and realize, it was just trying to mess us up. So that by the time we get to church, we'll be so out of out of focus. Uh, I can be on the way to church and just uh, and my phone will ring, and someone with a problem uh, that has nothing to do with uh, our church or our city. Uh, and and I don't know. This this is just to get my mind off the anointing of what God wants to do. Now, if I didn't have that sense, what I noticed, I can lose the, the capacity of what God wants to do, at least through me in that service today. There's times I'll walk into church, and I'll, I'll walk through here realizing I need to break some strongholds before this service ever starts. There's something mounting in the spirit against what God wants to do here today, and I want there to be an open flow. Sometimes I'll be praying right in the middle of worship and breaking things because I'm sensing and feeling that something is going on. And I see some of you doing the same. Uh, that's God speaking to you, but more importantly, it's you noticing what I am sensitive to notice will give you the winning edge. And I want to just talk about that, that principle. Write it down. W-I-N. Win. What I notice. Here's the next one. Same acronym. When I notice. We were talking about. Not only what I notice, but when I notice it. Sometimes if we, you know, that Holy Spirit night, that God speaking to us, and we walk into a service, and you feel that problem, pray right now. Uh, break through. You, you can seize a victory and capture, you know, a uh, victory right now in the spirit realm. Right now. And I, I, all of a sudden somebody will walk over to me and say, uh, you know, the air conditioners are on, this is not happening. Uh, the, the, the sound's too loud. And I can get caught up in things and lose the whole, not only the volume of what God is saying, <clears throat> Uh, I, I, can, I can become vulnerable and get caught up and then halfway through the service all of a sudden I remember oh my goodness uh, you dealt with me to pray about this and when I noticed it I should have really just sealed everything off and just go right to prayer right then I right, deal with that issue right there in the spirit realm I just want to talk about that just for a moment that's good that's good yeah the Sunday morning thing is true I, Paul and I finally just we so recognized how We'd start getting in a fight on Sunday morning, and uh, we we just have enough. Look, this can wait till after Sunday morning service. And strangely, why after Sunday morning service it didn't seem to matter them. <laughs> so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I was in a I was in a prayer group up uh, up near San Francisco for a while, and uh, they had challenged their people to exercise a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And what they challenged them to do was to spin go through their day acting as though Jesus were physically walking beside them. Which, of course, is true, actually. It is true. You just don't think about it. And uh, they, they, they actually would, would have, you know, conversations with the Lord. Like, Lord, you want Jeffy Peanut Butter or Skippy or, <laughs> you know, whatever. To, at, at that point. And, and a little bit on the silly side, but to, but to raise their awareness of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to, what I want to challenge you to do is to 
try to be very sensitive, you know, especially this week, to the Holy Spirit. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? Is anything, uh, anytime you see anything unusual, act as though the Lord is right beside you all the time because He is. Because He is, so act that way what is real, okay? What I'd like to do in just a few minutes we have left, which is very few, but uh, <clears throat> let's get together in just uh, small groups, three, four, five, and I want you to just pray for each other that you will all have a greater sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Just pray for each other. Just, just If you want to go one at a time around the circle, if you just want to pray in general, but uh, just grab a few of the people nearby, uh, near you, and just pray for them that this week they will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's do that. Let's do this first. Oh. Three, four or five minutes. My brother. Come here, my brother.